To solve a polynomial inequality, like the one shown here, our first step is to write the corresponding equation. In other words, we simply change the inequality sign to an equal sign, and we have x squared minus 3 equals 9 minus x. Next, we solve the equation. Since we have a squared term, we first set the equation equal to 0. So we move the 9 minus x to the left side by subtracting 9 and adding x to both sides of the equation. This gives us x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. Next, we factor the left side as the product of two binomials. Since the factors of negative 12 that add to positive 1 are positive 4 and negative 3, we have x plus 4 times x minus 3 equals 0. So either x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. And solving each equation from here, we have x equals negative 4 or x equals 3. Now, it's important to understand that the solutions to the equation, negative 4 and 3, represent what are called the critical values of the inequality, and we plot these critical values on a number line. However, notice that our original inequality uses a greater than sign rather than a greater than or equal to sign. So we use open dots on our critical values of negative 4 and positive 3. Remember that greater than or less than means an open dot, and greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, means a closed dot. Now, we can see that our critical values have divided the number line into three separate intervals, less than negative 4, between negative 4 and 3, and greater than 3. And here's the important part. Our next step is to test a value from each of the intervals by plugging the value back into the original inequality to see if it gives us a true statement. So let's first test a value from the less than negative 4 interval, such as negative 5. If we plug a negative 5 back in for both x's in the original inequality, we have negative 5 squared minus 3 is greater than 9 minus a negative 5, which simplifies to 25 minus 3 is greater than 9 plus 5, or 22 is greater than 14. Since 22 is greater than 14 is a true statement, this means that all values in the interval we're testing are solutions to the inequality, so we shade the interval. Next, we test a value from the between negative 4 and 3 interval, such as 0. If we plug a 0 back in for both x's in the original inequality, we have 0 squared minus 3 is greater than 9 minus 0, which simplifies to 0 minus 3 is greater than 9, or negative 3 is greater than 9. Since negative 3 is greater than 9, is a false statement. This means that all values in the interval we're testing are not solutions to the inequality, so we don't shade the interval. Next, we test a value from the greater than 3 interval, such as 4. If we plug a 4 back in for both x's in the original inequality, we have 4 squared minus 3 is greater than 9 minus 4 which simplifies to 16 minus 3 is greater than 5, or 13 is greater than 5. Since 13 is greater than 5 is a true statement, this means that all values in the interval we're testing are solutions to the inequality, so we shade the interval. Finally, we write the answer that's shown on our graph in set notation. The set of all x's such that x is less than negative 4, or x is greater than 3.